Hey everyone, this is Mark, and uh, I'm here in a Starbucks, actually. <laughs> but there's no one here except the people working here. Cleaning up. I wonder if they're closing. No, not for like two more hours. Holy cow. So, um, the reason I wanted to make this video is because uh, there seems to be some confusion uh, about how I lost the weight. And the fact that I was, I did a lot of it through the process of ketosis which makes a lot of people assume that I did the ketogenic or the keto diet. Um, I did not do the keto diet. Actually, I think the keto diet is extremely unhealthy. And I wrote a blog post about that, uh, which you can check out in the link in the description below. So please read that. Um, but in a nutshell, um, first of all, I really don't like the word diet. I think it's a terrible word. It's, uh, I just don't like that word. And the reasons are explained in the blog post. But here's the thing, I, I got a call from my dad earlier and he was concerned because he um, had done some reading that said that uh, ketosis was bad for the liver and the reality is that's not actually true ketosis isn't bad for the liver but the process by which most people get into ketosis is bad for the liver let me explain most people use the ketogenic diet or the keto diet to get into ketosis and the reality is that's the unhealthy thing. That's what actually hurts your liver. Ketosis itself is just a, uh, it's just uh, changing your fuel source for your cells and, uh, to actually better, cleaner burning fuel source than sugar, which is a different fuel source, or gly uh, glycogen or, or uh, gl glucose. Um, so think of it like this. A car doesn't cause accidents. It's the person and how they use the car that causes the accident. The car is just the car. Ketosis is just ketosis. It's just a, a method of use, using a cleaner fuel burning source for your cell function and your organ function. But the way you get into ketosis determines the health of your organs in your body when you're in ketosis. That's a really important distinction because it causes a lot of misunderstandings. A lot of people think of ketosis and the keto diet as the same thing, and they're not. They're completely not the same thing, even though they both have the word keto in it. And I did not do the keto diet. I didn't do the ketogenic diet, but I am in ketosis. Let me explain. <laughs> so the standard ketogenic diet or keto diet has a breakup of like 5% carbs, 25% 25% proteins and 70% fat. Those are the macronutrients that they use in the typical keto diet. I don't follow those macronutrients. And it's not because I think fat is unhealthy. Actually, I think fat is very beneficial. And it's not because I think that that's an ineffective way to get into ketosis. It's clearly an effective way on a biochemical basis. Um, but the percentage of macronutrients is unable to provide you with the necessary nutrition, phytochemicals, and trace minerals that you need in order to have your body operate in a healthy manner. So it's because that percentage uh, doesn't give you the, the necessary nutrients you need for your body to operate well. For example, uh, you end up with a fatty liver, you get a very toxic cellular environment, you get lots of gunk in your system, your gallbladder, your bile production gets overloaded, your kidneys uh, have problems, and you're probably a, a little bit constipated too, which isn't that great. So. The important thing about ketosis is that you actually need a lot of nutrients. The think of ketosis as the process is you're using fat as a fuel source, the fat from your body. When, you're, when you use that fat, there's a lot of byproducts, toxic byproducts that your body has to get rid of. And it gets rid of it through those, the gallbladder, the liver, the kidney. Um, and uh, that process of detoxification, that process requires these phytonutrients, these chemicals, these trace minerals that, that are that are brought to your system by green leafy vegetables like spinach, kale, uh, dandelion root and milk thistle are really good for detoxing the liver. Um, celery is really good, wheatgrass is great. So all of these things are necessary to cleanse your system. And if you don't eat enough of that stuff, then you're going to get backed up. You're going to get the fatty liver. You're going to get all those issues in your organs. And that's why a lot of people think ketosis is bad for the liver or bad for your organs. It isn't. It's the way that people get into ketosis that's bad. The standard keto diet is um, really heavy on meats, uh, really heavy on dairy, really heavy on fats. Um, and I am not that way. So what do I do? So I do what I call a keto green protocol, 
um, which you can get details on the blog. But essentially, it's more like 70% nutrient-dense plants like kale, spinach, blueberries, onion, celery, broccoli. 10% uh, protein, like maybe 10 ounces a day of protein, and then like 20%. Um, fats and I and I use fats in a different way I don't start with fats in my day what I do is I use fats to supplement the necessary calories I need for the day to not go into starvation mode so I don't want to I don't want to eat so little that I'm starving and if I only eat vegetables then you're not getting enough calories because they're just not calorically dense so you use fats to supplement to make sure that you get the calories you need <coughs> excuse me so but it's the last thing I focus on. It's not the first thing. And as a result, I have a lot of benefits. That The main benefit is that my organs aren't in a toxic state. They're actually detoxifying. And it's actually much cleaner and better. So, <coughs> I would never advise someone to go on a keto diet. Actually, I think it's very unhealthy. But if you follow something more like the Keto Green Protocol or something similar to that, uh, then it's much healthier for your system and it's much healthier for your organs and you're actually detoxifying much more than you're ingesting or creating toxins in your system. Much healthier. So the important question to ask yourself is when you're looking at food, ask yourself, is this food providing the nutrients that will help my cells function at an optimal level? And if the answer is no, but it won't spike my insulin, then you're missing the point because Ketosis is not about weight loss. Ketosis is about changing to a better fuel source for your cells and your organs, including your brain. Ketones are a much better fuel source. It's cleaner. It's like running on electricity versus diesel. Uh, sugar is not a good fuel source because you get spikes and ups and downs in your energy levels throughout the day. It burns, uh, it causes insulin, which is causes like almost all the chronic diseases happening are a result of some sort of insulin Think Alzheimer's, heart disease, you name it. Insulin is a key component of those, diabetes. Um, so it's much better for you to be in ketosis, but not the way that a lot of people do it with a ketogenic diet. So the reason I did this is because, uh, one, I just wanted to have some place to send people that <laughs> don't understand the distinction between ketosis and the keto diet. I did not do the keto diet, but I'm in ketosis. I hope that makes total sense. If you have any questions, just put them below in the comments. Check out the blog, the links below. I also linked, uh, I put a few videos in my blog post that help explain some of the distinctions a little bit better. Uh, but I hope that helped, at least explain a little bit more about what I'm doing and how I did it. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's it. So I hope everyone's doing well. Have a great day and enjoy your life. Peace.